Good morning, Connections. It's Friday, December 10th, 21. The voice just does not quite want to be there. But we're going to get up, we're going to get moving, and we're going to press on, even if our voice is not whole, completely with us yet. Thank you for being here, and thank you for continuing to pursue God. Let's get started. So we've been talking all week about the foundation and the need to delve deeper into God's word so that we have a better foundation, stronger roots. We spoke early in the week of tragedy and, and the role that it plays in testing how deep our roots, how strong our foundation is. I want you to be able to withstand the pressures and strains of this world. And I want you to find your way home. And as much as I want that for you, God desires that for you so much more. His love is so much more complete and so much deeper than anything that we've ever experienced. So let's continue to strive to build stronger foundations. And upon those foundations, as we discussed yesterday, a church that accomplishes God's will and glorifies him. as being built together, assembled as a holy priesthood. So yesterday we talked about the cornerstone. The cornerstone is very valuable when it comes to making sure that everything aligns. Along with a cornerstone, there's blueprints. We know quite a bit about blueprints at this point after several years of being in a construction project, literally building a church building. One of the final processes that we are engaged in now is that the city inspectors come and they, they look at all of the, the work that's been accomplished by all the disciplines, be that plumbers or electricians or the people that put the air conditioning systems in, and they consult the blueprint. Is this what you presented to the city that you said you were going to do? Has it been accomplished? Does it meet the standards of the city? And if it doesn't, then it is marked down and the electricians have to go back and address where they didn't follow the blueprint or uh, plumbers or et cetera. God lays out a very similar plan that he clearly defines his standards and what we are to be constructed, what standard we are to be constructed to. And those willing to align themselves with the cornerstone and, and submit to the process of building to God's standards are celebrated. And then there are those that are still striving and may be sent back. No, it, this, is, this still has to be addressed. We talked yesterday of the sancti sanctification process and much of the sanctification process is show me, Lord, search me, search <laughs> me, Compared to the blueprints and what is still out of alignment, what do I need to work on? I need to true it up for your glory and honor. That's what we're going to end this week's conversation. We're going to end this week's study of the prophetic from the Old Testament into the New Testament. Discussing these blueprints. Isaiah 11 Verse 2, the Spirit of the Lord will rest on him, 
<clears throat> excuse me, the spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears. This is another prophetic word on the coming Messiah and that he will be perfectly aligned with God's will and he will not we man typically is all about perception but God knows our hearts what we will be measured when we are measured to the blueprints will be our heart We have God's standard before us. We have Jesus who is living to that, that standard. Now we, as followers of Christ, are called to that same standard. John 12, 47, is where Jesus explains his role more clearly and points to the blueprints. Jesus is the demonstration of what it is to live to God's perfect standard. Jesus is our Savior and the, the bridge that closes the gap between God's holiness and our unrighteousness. But he is always pointing to the Father and the Father's will, the Father's blueprints. If anyone hears my voice or anyone hears my words, but does not keep them, I do not judge that person. For I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. Now, we're going to, to, this word judgment is a heavy word, and a weighted word. Sometimes we, we use it in, when we're talking about holding each other accountable, and sometimes we're referencing the final judgment, and the, you're in, you're out. Okay. In this case, Jesus is using this word, talking about, the final judgment. I am not here to judge you today. I'm not here to sort the sheep from the goats. I am here to proclaim life. I am here to, to, to bring salvation to the world. As we unpack this more, you will see... You have a choice to make. Hear my words and, and, and enjoy a relationship with my Father by aligning yourself to Him or choose not to. I am not here to judge. If anyone hears my words but does not keep them, I do not judge that person. For I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. There is a judge for the one who rejects me and does not accept my words. The very words I have spoken will condemn them at the last day. Okay. Jesus comes to the, into the world, shares the gospel message, shares how we receive salvation 
and then leaves the choice in our hands. Laying out the blueprints before us and saying, this is the standard that you will be judged by. Now, by God's grace, in order to, to achieve salvation, believe in me. Invite me into your life to be your Lord and Savior. For I did not speak on my own, but the Father who sent me commanded me to say all that I have spoken. This is the, the beautiful part of, of Jesus' ministry, is he is demonstrating what it is to be in submission to the Father. And as followers of Jesus, we too submit to the Father. And we would do, do well not to speak words that don't align with the Father's heart or aren't given to us by the Father to speak, just as Jesus did. I know that his commands leads, leads to eternal life. So whatever I say is just what the Father has told me to say. I am the cornerstone. I am in perfect alignment with the Father's heart. You can true yourself up to me. My Father's plans, those blueprints, align perfectly with everything that I speak. If you need a, ever need a guideline on, on how you're doing, where you are in relationship to God, things that perhaps you need to work on in order to become in better relationship with God. The blueprints are there. Reminder, we do not, no matter, if we were truly just living by the blueprints as the Israelites and the law, and we all fail. We will never be able to pass that standard. That's why we needed a savior. Jesus's role in our life is to true us up even when it seems impossible. Our responsibility is to work diligently at becoming more and more true to the the cornerstone, closer to the blueprints in order to glorify God and demonstrate what it is to truly be transformed by his love. There is a plan. It is clearly laid out through the Old Testament and New Testament. It has been in the works for a very long time even longer than construction at 1900 has been going on. And it is for our well-being. It's for our eternity with him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. Your plan is perfection. We thank you, Lord, for Jesus who offered up himself, knowing that we cannot on our own align to your holiness. We desire to be better, Lord. We desire to be a shining example of what your love can accomplish in those who are willing to submit to you. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of salvation 
we look beyond it to how we can represent you better. We desire to remain completely focused and aligned with you. Forgive us, Lord, for all of our imperfection. Forgive us, Lord, for our lack of faith. We need you now more than ever. As the lines in the construct of this world seem to blur, we are grateful, Lord, that your blueprints are fixed and never moving. Help us to live to your standards today, Lord, by the grace, by the love, through Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, have a wonderful Saturday. I will see you back here on Sunday. Looking forward to having a, a fuller church as we continue to move towards the launch of our new facility. Know that I love you and I miss you. So we see each other again. <laughs>